welcome to Pacific Indians Chatter. I am your host, Cody Kelly, joined alongside with my co-host, Scott Brown. Back on another snow day, Cody. Yeah, these snow days are great for recording. We get the kind of get the school to ourselves and get everything done. Well, it's about time for spring sports, so I'm I'm about done with them. I'm ready to move on. Yeah, hopefully they're done because next week is spring sports starting up. Before we get to anything at the high school, though, let's start with our Riverbend Roundup. Yes, the volleyball team entered action this week with their annual first game matchup at Washington with the Blue Jays. Uh, the seventh graders were in a nail biter. They lost a two set to one match versus the Blue Jays. I think the Indians took game one relatively easily. The Blue Jays returned the favor in game two. And in game three, it was back and forth. The Indians had a, a lead late, couldn't hold on and lost 26-24 which was an exciting match. My wife said the gym was full at Washington, full of parents, full of kids. Um, both eighth grade teams cheering really loud for an opening season. It was an awesome match. Uh, Mackenzie Miller and Ava Maxey with the two big nights for the seventh graders, both on the serve and serve receive. My wife was very pleased with all of her girls and can't wait for game number two. The eighth grade lost two sets to zero against the Blue Jays. And two very close contests. I think both of them end up 25-22. And they look to get back after it next week with several games on the docket. The track team gets started Monday at Riverbend. They'll be led by coaches Mel Missy and Angie O'Neill are taking over the middle school track team. And for a while, they're going to practice at Riverbend. And then once a week or so goes by, the weather starts to warm up and They'll get them up here to the high school to get on the track. So that that's all I've got for Riverbend. It's nice to have stuff going on at Riverbend again. Now let's head up to 425 Indian Warpath Path for the little girls basketball. They played Festus on Monday night. The JV lost 37 to 30. Jalen Miller led the Indians with 13. Anna Cox had 10. And then on the varsity side of things that night, the varsity picked up a big win against Festus, who was sitting 16 and 7 on the year when they came in. 54-37, making it three in a row for the Indians. A nice little winning streak to take into districts. Molly Pritchard had 17 points and 11 rebounds. That's back-to-back -back games for her with a double-double. Abby Hall had 14 points. And then Lexi Clark was just all over the place with nine points, nine steals, five rebounds, four assists. She just did about everything that night. Yeah, what a fun game to watch. My kids were there for the girls' Little League night. And if that tells you the depth of the Four Rivers... You know, our girls aren't in the top three or four spots in the Four Rivers, and we just handled two Jeffco girls teams in a row going back to Grandview last week and Festus this week. If, if that tells you how good girls basketball is in this area. And after the game, I was able to get a quick interview with Coach Melanie Missy. Joined with Coach Missy after their 54-37 win over Festus. Coach, that's three in a row. How's it feel going towards districts? I mean, it feels really good, and it's definitely a big booster for the girls, you know, going into districts. You know, getting that seventh seed and everyone, I think, has their mindset that we're going to win or lose that first game. So I'm really glad that we have a winning streak going and it just gives them that extra push. Several players in uh, double digits again tonight, a couple double doubles. Team just all over the place fighting for rebounds. It seems like they're really ready to go as we get there. Yeah, this was uh, one of the teams that we played that had two power posts that was getting after it. And so our girls on the block really had to hustle after it and get those rebounds, put uh, their bodies on them to box out. And I mean, the refs called a close one again tonight. So it was definitely trouble when some of them got some fouls and we had to rely on some of our guards down there. All right, Coach, thank you for joining me. And then you mentioned they did the Little League recognition where they brought in the 4th, 5th, and 6th grade traveling teams to recognize them at halftime and do a little scrimmage, which I thought was nice. Yeah, then they had some pizza for them after the game. We had a nice crowd, and the girls love it, and it gives them something to kind of see what they're going to look forward to when they get older. Yeah, that's always great to let everybody know what high school sports is about. Um, real quick on the girls' side, they have district Saturday of the day. This will air at 2 o'clock. They'll play Lift for Life, the defending state champs of Class 3 last year. They've taken a, a jump to Class 5 because of the championship factor, but still a very good ball club. Yeah, I, ho I hope the girls go out and don't feel any pressure and just, just play, you know, loose and free and getting after it in that game. Let's go jumping into the boys' basketball side. The Indians hosted uh, the homeschool team, the St. Louis Blue Knights, 
It was senior night for the Indians. Um, the JV got a big win. Coach Hillhouse said everybody uh, was involved in that win, and a lot of guys off the bench got some action. And the varsity continued the theme for the night with a 66-43 win over the Blue Knights. Nick Iliff again, 18 points and 10 boards. Uh, Quinn Blackburn with 12 points and 11 rebounds, another double-double, and Jack Meyer with 11. And those three guys are their leading scorers and tend to typically fill the stat sheet. Senior night, the, the Indians will say goodbye to three seniors. Uh, Nick Iliff, Drex, Blackburn, and Logan Bonds all played their last home game at the reservation. Each of these guys has started several games this season. Um, they've been very good role players. Uh, they've had some influence as of late. I know uh, Iliff's had a couple big games on offense, and before that, Logan Bonds kept them in some conference games with some, some good three-point shooting, and Drex has given them energy all year long. After Tuesday night's win, I was joined with Coach Cody Bradfish. Joined post game with Coach Cody Bradfish after a big Indians win on senior night. Coach, how's it feel to get a win on senior night at home? It feels really good the way our guys have worked. Uh, Logan, Drax, and Nick I, uh, we just wanted to send them out the best way we could. And I thought our, our underclassmen especially helped us with that. So always good to send your seniors out on a win. Now we look forward to districts. you got Lutheran South on Saturday. It's got to be nice going in with a couple wins. Absolutely. We talked about um, going into the St. Clair game, if we could get some momentum going into, into Saturday against Lutheran South. You know, that's going to help us. After tonight, everybody's 0-0. So our records are clean. we got to go in there. It's Lutheran South, first time we played them down in Union. It was a physical game. They're, they've got a couple wins recently too. So it's going to be a battle. But I'm, I'm proud of our guys and getting some, some positive stuff going. Right. Thank you, Coach, for joining me. I'll let you go celebrate with your team. Thank you. Yeah, and they go into District Saturday at 11. I mean, they'll already be probably halfway through by the time this hits the air against Lutheran South. I talked to uh, Coach Bradfish a little bit about that, and you'll hear that in our interview at the end of this. Yeah, and the winner of that one gets Webster Grove. So that that's uh, – I don't know if that's a – a prize or not, but I know they want to get a W on Saturday. And then also the boys basketball side of things, they did the same thing on Tuesday night. They brought in their fourth grade basketball team, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh and eighth grade, and honored all of their little league programs that night as well. And and as they should, and then it was exciting, and some of the video was terrific on that one as well. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, PHS Athletics Facebook, I believe it has some pictures posted from that night. It was pretty uh, pretty impressive. Uh, moving to wrestling. Wrestling wrapped up last Saturday while we were recording at State. We kind of knew that the medal streak was going to stay alive, but we were just waiting to see where. Uh, Warren Fiedler keeps the medal streak going with a sixth in state finish. Uh, it was a great season by all the wrestlers as a whole with another conference title and seven state qualifiers. They're, they're set up nicely for next year. All those kids got experience in Columbia, and they've got a good crop of middle school kids coming. Yeah, and we talk year. about that a little bit with Jesse Knott, which you'll hear on the back side of this. We have Coach Melanie Messi, Coach Bradfish, and Coach Jesse Knott joining us today this week as our guest. Good luck to the dance team. They are at State, I believe, Saturday. The day, once again, the day this airs. The beach team got pushed back another week for their FRC competition. Hopefully they'll get to have that at some point. It's been, yeah, we're waiting for... Uh, the streak to continue. And then uh, cheerleading wraps up their season this week, too. So it was a great season for them. It's a long season for them. I think they start tryouts again in March to get ready for the next year. So let, before we jump into everybody's favorite segment, the performance of the week, let's just throw it on down to Charlie's Corner. This is Charlie Meyer, and I'm here with Coach Hillas, the JV coach of our boys' basketball program. How are you doing today, Coach? Doing good. So you guys had the game against the Blue Knights the other night to end your season. So how did the season go overall? I thought our season had a lot of ups and downs. The guys did a really good job of riding those waves and never getting too down on the down parts. Um, still always working hard to keep improving. We ended on a really good note on a win. Do you think the team played to the best of their ability? Yeah, I think all, all year the guys really maximized their abilities at practice and working hard. Um, 
nobody ever let anybody take time off. They kept pulling for each other. So I think they really got about as much as they could get um, out of the season. Uh, who do you think played a leadership role on the team this year? A bunch of guys come to mind. Uh, one would be maybe Logan Hanna. He did a good job of accepting his role. And anytime we'd be needing to work on things that are stuff you need to be locked in on, like communicating, he'd always try to help out to make sure everybody was talking and everybody staying engaged in, in the games, whether he was in the game or on the bench, he was staying engaged and trying to get fired up and make sure everybody was working hard. Uh, was there anyone on the team that you thought really improved this year? And Again, a bunch of guys improved. Uh, I think one guy we pulled up a little early on that played a lot of freshmen, he ended up having to stop playing with them and play with me full time and then actually starting to get some varsity time was Connor Lampkin. He really showed later in the year how he has a really good um, natural ability to score the ball. And as long as he can you know, improve on the other aspects of his game, he's going to be a really well-rounded player and be tough to stop. How do you think the t team improved as a whole this year? Uh, I think uh, we improved pretty well. I think one thing we need to work on is communicating. I think uh, our guys really need to communicate. There's so many players out there that don't do it. And if you find a team that's really good, you will notice that they do communicate with each other during the game. They're loud, they're talking, they're engaged, they understand what's going on. After watching the freshman season this year, are you excited to work with them? Oh, for sure. They had a great season. There's a bunch of guys on there that work hard. They really rebound the ball well, which is one of our weak points. So it's going to be fun having those guys to work with. That's going to be it today, Coach. Thank you for being here. and Appreciate it, Charlie. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you to our student correspondent, Charlie Meyer, for the great interviews this week. Now let's go to everybody's favorite segment. Performance. I'll jump right in and jump us off this week performance of the week just so I can beat Coach Brown to this one. I'll take the state medalist Warren Fiedler, who was 24-14 and 14 on the year and placed six at state and continued the streak. Uh, we heard a little bit from the coaches uh, about his wrestling style. He's a little bit of an unconventional style, very scrappy. Let's say blue-collar Pacific-style wrestler, just somebody that finds a way to get it done. Yeah, we've had quite a few of those over the, over the years. Congrats to Warren. My Performance of the week is a guy I mention pretty much every time we talk about the boys' basketball program, and we'll give him the, the nod this week. Our big 6'8 junior center, the man in the middle, another double-double this week. Quinn Blackburn is my pick. Um, he's been the leader in scoring and rebounding for this team all year. He is their quiet team leader, leads by example. I know when he came over from Washington when I was still in the basketball program, we were so excited that this big kid was coming over and um, you know you, not too often in high school do you get six foot eight guys to play in the middle for you we've had one years ago um, Aaron Brinker who was an all-state performer for us and played college basketball but Quinn plays summer basketball he plays some AAU he works really hard on his game and if you've seen him this year his post moves have tremendously improved he can knock down 15 footers I know he can knock down the three as well he changes the game inside with his presence, his presence. And I was thinking about this earlier. I know he has the most dunks in his career um, as an Indian on the varsity already. I mean, I've, I've seen the Indians play since 1980. They did have a seven-footer in 1980 named Justin Young. But I think since then, for sure, he's had the most dunks, and, and that's an exciting play in basketball. Best part of it, great student, takes tough classes, uh, real coach's dream, listens, very respectful, role model, and he comes from a great family unit, and they're pulling for him and his brother every single night at the games. Um, can't wait for another year of Quinn. He's my pick for performance of the week. That actually, and that'll just about do it for us this week. I have my microphone muted. Uh, that'll do it for us this week on the show, but join us next week as we have a couple of interviews next week, I have Dr. Katina Armstrong joining us to talk about the St. Patrick's Day Parade that will be going on March 12th. And I'll also be joining the studio with our athletic director, Blair Thompson. But don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with our winter sports recap with interviews from Coach Jesse Knott, Coach Melanie Missy, and Coach Cody Bradfish. A 
joined with wrestling coach Jesse Knott to kind of discuss the whole season. Just finished state this weekend. Uh, coach, how did your season go? Uh, overall, you know, another successful season for us. We we were able to win a conference title, took third at districts, uh, qualified our first girl to the state tournament, which was a huge, huge moment for our program, especially on that side of things. Um, got six boys to the state tournament and then ended the year with another state medalist with, with Warren Fiedler taking six. You know, overall, like I said, it kind of an up and down season, trying to get everybody healthy, but I felt like we really hit a hit a good stretch there with the last two or three weeks and, and you look at our results and I think they show what what capabilities our team had. Yeah, you say up and down season, that's a conference championship season still and a state medalist. So that's just kind of what you expect here from Pacific is a little on the higher side. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I look I look at the state tournament, how we how we finished and we were able to get one on the medal stand. I really was hoping that we could get another one at least, maybe a couple with our three seniors that were down there. Um, Warren Fiedler, with his state tournament run, he did an amazing job. He's a gritty wrestler, and that's, I mean, his matches were tooth and nail fighting to the very end. You know, he, he was down in all three matches that he ended up winning. Um, losing at, it out of the first period in each and every one of those, but found ways to claw back in it and, and come out with the victory in the third. And, you know, one of his matches he won with literally three seconds left. So it, he had a great tournament. Um, sad to see Ethan Flaherty fall short. He, he's kind of been our horse the last year. Um, but sometimes the moment kind of gets to you and, you know, he, he's – he regrets what he did in that match, taking in kind of a shot he didn't have to. It's just one of those things. Um, but it, nonetheless, he had an incredible career, finishing with 133 career wins, which ranks him 10th all time. So amazing career, three-time qualifier for us. Just fell, just fell short of his goal, and that's that's what happens in this sport. It's just like life. And then kind of peeking ahead at next year, you bring back quite a few guys. Is that going to help you going forward? Absolutely. You know, we we're able to actually get three guys there. Um, to get that initial state experience out of the way. Because if you've ever been there, if you've never been there, it's it's tough your first time. You know, all the big crowd, the big stadium, the, the mats laying all over that floor. It's just a lot of pressure. So to have our three guys with Nathaniel Naff and Blake McKay and Tim Link get there and get those matches wrestled, Two of them were able to pick up wins, which is going to be huge going forward. Um, so those three, those are going to be our hammers next year and a lot to build off of with, with some other guys coming up and, and, you know, a couple guys in that sophomore, junior class this year that are going to be a lot more developed going into next year as well as the freshmen. And talking to Coach Grody last week, it sounds like the girls' program is going to get a little bit of a boost next year too with whatever everybody that wrestled out of Riverbend this year. Yep, we've got a couple girls coming up, one that – you know, we look at her as an incoming freshman that can really make some noise right from the get-go. And you add that to Scarlett Boyer had an incredible bounce back year this year, I felt like, and then Zoe Fisher, our first girl state qualifier. I think overall, you know, we're not going to have that big name this next, this upcoming year, maybe either, but we're going to have a solid performances across the board. And I think we're just going to continue to build that depth with our program going forward. And how quick, real quick, how uh, how many years was that medalist now? That was our 19th straight season with the state medalist. So you'll come back next year to go for 20. That's the plan, but you know, state medals, we, we're to the point where we need to stop looking forward to just getting a medal and just expect a medal every year and, and kind of raise those standards. All right, well, since it's Monday, the first day after your season ends, I'm not gonna keep you too long because you finally get to go home after school, which is, Kind of rare for, especially the varsity coaches. They're here late all the time. Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. I'm joined in studio here with Coach Melanie Missy to break down the girls' basketball season as a whole. Coach, how do you think your season went? Um, it went pretty well. Definitely a huge difference from last year to this year. Um, we started off slow. I mean, that's kind of expected with a new coach, new mentality of the game. And so we started off slow and then eventually – figured out what worked for us on the court and just kept working on our strengths and finished the year so far, nine and 15 record. Yeah, it sort of looked like early in the year, you did have a little bit of trouble trying to get the girls used to the new system, buying in. And the thing I always used to tell you at work is learning how to win 
and it sort of seemed like they kind of flipped that switch at the back end of the season and started winning those close games. Yeah, I mean, we had several close games that we didn't end up winning, and I think it was about six games that we lost within seven points. I mean, I think with a nine record, and especially with no seniors this year, we have a solid group coming back next year, so... I mean, even this year being a developmental year, we can look forward to next year and really put to work what, you know, some of our weaknesses that we can really be a threat on the offense and both defense end. And you already kind of touched on that was my next question is, it's got to be nice coming back next year with the same exact team, just another year of experience for these girls. Yeah, I we have 13 who are on the varsity team right now. And again, we just have sophomores and juniors this year. So looking into next year, I hope we do get a big freshman group in. That way we can raise our numbers in our program and have a freshman team, a JV team, and a varsity team that can get after it, and especially more numbers in practice to help each other go at it, make each other better. And then as we get ready to close your season, you have uh, Lift for Life tomorrow, or the day this will air. Uh, what's it look like for a preview against Lift for Life? I mean, they're very competitive. They won state last year in their district, so uh, they're a fast-paced team. And what I told my girls is the one thing they cannot do is come in scared. No matter what the other team's record is, what they did in the past year or anything, they just need to go out and play the game that they're capable of, um, be positive, be team players, and keep that head up. And just to touch on one thing, we talk about the people behind the scenes. Um, you also bring back all your managers next year because I don't remember a senior night for any of them. Yeah, uh, all of our managers are, I believe, juniors. I'm not sure if we have a so sophomore or not. But, um, yeah, they played a huge role this year. Last year, I think we only had a couple managers. And this year, when I started getting the emails that, these girls are interested in being managers for our team. I was really happy about that. We have five girls who, you know, do the book, film our game, and even very helpful in practice. And these girls are not just our managers. They're part of our team. Yeah, I was going to say it's evolved a lot since I uh, was a manager for Coach Van Leer for one year. The, we managers didn't have to go to practice, and now I see managers at every single practice. So that's a new trend. All right, Coach, thank you for joining us. A great season. Hopefully we'll have you on a little bit, maybe in the spring, because you're doing middle school track. And definitely we'll have you back on next year when we get close to the new season. Yep, hopefully next week I'm still doing practice. But if not, then, yep, bring on the track season. Right, thank you. That's Coach Melanie Missy joining me in studio to break down her season. Joined with varsity basketball coach Cody Bradfish to kind of discuss the season as a whole. Coach, how do you think you guys did this year? I think uh, we, we definitely played a tough schedule this year, um, non-conference wise, when we got started, uh, losing as much as we did. Uh, we got off to a little bit of a rough start. I think we started two and 10 in our first 12, but since the Owensville tournament, our guys have really bounced back. I think we're around six and seven or six and eight. So we've really, uh, last couple of weeks, we've really made some changes the way we're practicing. Um, our execution games, guys cheering each other on. It's It's been a, been a total transformation of guys just coming together and playing for each other. Yeah, it seems like after Christmas break, your guys kind of had a switch flip. They finally started to maybe play a little better as a unit, and that's leading into district this tomorrow. Yeah, and one thing we talked about as we got into conference play was trying to make sure we're going out with our best foot forward with our seniors. And uh, I think in our last two especially, we've, we were starting to get some momentum going. We got a chance tomorrow against Lutheran South to – if we can get a win there, we to have our first three-game win streak of the season. So there's a lot of positives, and uh, we got a good opportunity tomorrow to go add to that, hopefully. And you're losing three talented seniors, but relatively a young group still with besides them. So what do you think about next year? Well, we're, we need a big offseason. Um, we got to get a lot of shooting in this uh, spring, summer, and fall. Uh, we got to get guys just kind of in general playing a little bit more. But, uh, you know, as far as – you know, shooting and experience and getting in the weight room, getting stronger. You know, we, we like what we got coming back. Uh, very grateful for these three seniors that, that have helped us out. I think uh, with Logan, Nick, I, and uh, Drex, they've, they've done a great job of setting an example of just being coachable, uh, playing as hard as they can, being good teammates. So really proud of them and, and what they've been able to kind of lay 
uh, the foundation for moving forward for next season. And then also a little bit of an unsung hero kind of thing with your team, the managers. I believe they're all coming back next year too. Yeah, we've got a great group of managers. Um, you know, we're really fortunate. Kind of behind the scenes, they keep us rolling. We got uh, Jenna Ferris, we got Lauren Jackson, we got Charlie Meyer, Layla Bonner, Emma Marler, and Carly Vaughn. They all do an excellent job of just not only assisting with practice, but games and and helping us kind of get to where we need to be and and. They're really the kind of the unsung heroes of our program. So glad to have them back. And they've, they've done a great job of, of, especially for our younger managers, helping them and, and kind of setting a good example of how to help our team out. And this will air right during the middle of your game Saturday, but just a quick uh, kind of rundown on Lutheran South. Yeah, so we played Lutheran South in Union. Uh, towards the end of January, we were able to pull out a 41-39 win. Uh, with them, you know, tomorrow it's going to be a really physical game. They've got a really good big guy. Uh, his number is number 34. We got to get him going left, finishing left. We got to keep them off the glass. Uh, they've got a little bit of shooting outside. So, you know, our kind of our game plan for tomorrow is, you know, can we get them off the glass, uh, keep them at one and done? Can we push out and transition? They're going to play a little matchup zone. We got to be able to attack that. So, it's uh, it's going to kind of come down to how physical the game is and how, how we handle it, how well we take care of the ball and what kind of shots we're getting. So it's going to be a good opportunity, a neutral four again, like we saw them down in Union and a chance to uh, hopefully advance, you know, if we can get a win and play a really good Webster Groves team. All right. Thank you, Coach. I know you got practice, so I'll let you get to it. Thank you.